trash panda. Drake. Nicholas Cage. So I'm an idiot. I know I said I was gonna do this video on making an AR social media viewer, but it turns out to use the Facebook or Instagram follow me at Matthew Hallberg API and pull down a user's pictures, you actually need to get your app approved. So we aren't gonna do that. Instead, we're gonna use the Google API to search for memes, which is infinitely better anyway. We're going to use Vuforia's ground plane detection for this, so this app will work for most Android and iOS users. Using Vuforia will also allow us to anchor the picture's positions in space so that we can actually move through the sea of pictures and they'll all stay where they're supposed to. We're also going to test out the IBM Watson SDK in Unity. This will allow us to leverage their natural language processing so we can do all of our meme searches with our voice. Nicholas Cage. So the good news is that we can use all of these APIs that we're talking about for free. So you don't need to spend any money to follow along with this video. The bad news is there are some caveats with all of the APIs, like the Google search API only allows you to do up to 100 searches a day for free before you have to pay. And the IBM Watson SDK only gives you a 30 day free trial. So in short, the app that we're gonna make will get our speech from the microphone in Unity, send that to the IBM Watson servers, which will return to us the text. We will then take that text and send it to the Google servers that will return us a list of image URLs in JSON form. So to get the Watson API going, you're going to need to first get your credentials from their site. Go to console.bluemix.net, create an account, and log in. Go to your IBM account and navigate to Cloud Foundry Orgs and create a new space. Now go to your dashboard and click to Browse Services. Add the speech to text service because that's what we're going to use. Choose your region, organization, and space and create the project. Now you will see your API credentials at the bottom. Import the IBM Watson SDK from the Asset Store in Unity. We can test this out by creating an empty game object and call it IBM Watson, and add the example streaming script. This script is already set to record audio from Unity and send it up to the Watson servers for processing. For now, we're just going to use this example script because we have a lot of other stuff to do. But in the future, I would like to take maybe a deeper dive into using their vision API so we can tell what objects are in an image, like in this video I did a while ago. Anyway, this script is looking for a UI text object. So let's create a new UI button. This will give us the text that we need. We will use the button later. Set the canvas to scale with screen size and resize the button a little bit. Anchor it to the bottom left. Drag that text into the empty slot. Open up the script and let's add our IBM Watson credentials. So find where the results field text is used and set it to only alt.transcript because we're going to use this text to search Google. Now before we can test this out, we need to make the text size itself dynamically. So whatever we say will fit inside the box. Go back to the text and set it to best fit. Type in some text to test it out. Now, when we click play, our words will be transcribed to text from the Watson text-to-speech API. So the next piece that we need to do is get the Google API set up and running. I did a video on this before uh, where we used REST APIs in Unity, so I'll link to that down in the description. But at a high level, we're just getting this set up so that we can send an HTTP request uh, to the Google servers, which will return us a response in JSON form. So go to the Google Custom Search JSON API setup page, uh, click to get an API key, and create a new app. Keep this open. We're going to use it later. Now we can go to the control panel, put in anything for the sites to search, name it whatever you want, and click create. Click control panel, and let's make some modifications. We want to mainly search memes and turn on image search. Under sites to search, switch that to the entire web. Click Update to save everything. Now, find the Google API Explorer and go to the Custom Search API. This will allow us to format the JSON response we get from Google. So put in anything for the query for now, paste in your search engine ID, 
Put one in for the filter so we don't get duplicates. Put in 10 under num because that's the maximum number of results we can return at a time. Put in image for search type because that's what we want to return. And uh, put one in for start. Finally, under fields, um, put item slash link because for each item returned, we only want the image link. We don't care about anything else. So now when you click execute, you will see that you get 10 nice image links returned. So now we have to get these pictures into Unity. First, let's get Vuforia working so we can leverage their ground plane detection. Save your current scene and go to the build settings. Switch your platform to Android or iOS, and if you're on iOS, put something in for the bundle identifier, add a camera and microphone usage description, and under XR settings, check Vuforia augmented reality supported. Now in the scene, delete the main camera and add a Vuforia AR camera. Go to the configuration section and change tracking mode to positional. Uncheck all the databases because we don't need them. Now add a plane finder and we need to override its default behavior because we want to deploy the ground plane stage only once. So let's find the deploy stage once script on the Vuforia website. Bring that script into Unity and put it on the plane finder. Removing the old script that was there. Change the mode to interactive and make sure the interactive hit test function gets called on that Unity event. While we're here, let's set the button we made earlier to active once we found the ground plane uh, and set its default state to inactive. Now put a ground plane uh, into the scene and change it to midair because we want all the pictures floating in the air. Drag this ground plane into the empty slot on the plane finder. Before we can start putting all these pieces together, we need to create a prefabricated game object that we can instantiate every time a picture is loaded. So create an empty game object under the ground plane stage and call it pick prefab. Create a quad as a child of that and scale it by two. Rotate its Y by 180 degrees so that the parent's forward vector, uh, which is shown as a blue arrow, is the front of the quad. So create a new script called picture behavior and add it to our pick prefab. Now drag this pick prefab into your assets folder and this is what we're going to put each picture on. So inside picture behavior, first create a public renderer quad renderer and that's what we're gonna put uh, our image texture onto. And then create a private vector three desired position because we're gonna throw these images up in the air when they're created and then kind of interpolate them down to uh, their current position. So it looks like they're falling from the sky when they get loaded in. So inside the start function, um, go transform.lookat camera.main.transform. This will make the image look at our camera so it's facing the correct direction, direction when it gets loaded. And then create a vector 3 desired angle and set that to a new vector 3 where the x equals 0, uh, the y is transform.eulerangles.y, and the z is 0. Then do transform.rotation equals quaternion.euler desired angle because we want the image to look at the camera, but we want it to only transform on the y-axis. So that's why we do that. Now we want to force this object up into the air. So go uh, desired position equals transform.local position, and then transform.local position plus equals a new vector three, uh, where we just are basically adding 20 to the y. Now in the update function, uh, go transform.local position equals vector three.lerp, and uh, pass in the local position and then the desired position time dot delta time times 4f so that will smoothly interpolate us to our desired position so in the start function we set our desired position to the local position when the object loaded in because we're going to set that later and then we bumped it up to 20 on the y so in the update function then we're going to interpolate back down to that desired position now create a uh, public function, public void load image, and uh, that takes a string URL. And uh, from there, we're going to start a coroutine so we can load this image in from its URL. So inside this coroutine, we're going to create a new WW object, and we're going to uh, yield until that's completed. And then on the quad renderer, we're going to set its main texture to the texture of that uh, WWW result. Now let's drag in the reference to the quad renderer. We only have two scripts left to make, so let's create a C-sharp script called Google Service.cs and PictureFactory.cs. 
So Google service is what we're going to use to communicate with the Google API. That's going to return us the JSON of our request, and we're going to then parse that JSON to extract the URLs, which will then pass to uh, picture behavior and load all of the images. So uh, first thing we need to do is create a public picture factory and then create a public text, uh, button text. So in order to do that, uh, make sure you uh, are using unityengine.ui. And then create a private const string, which is going to be your API key. So go back to the window that we loaded before and paste in your API key. So the first thing we need is a function called get picture, which is going to start a coroutine called picture routine. So the first thing we're going to do in picture routine is set the uh, button text parent game object to off. And then create a string variable query, which we're going to set to the text of the button, which we created earlier. Now, to make this query um, URL friendly, we're going to go www.scapeurl. And we're going to append the query with memes so that we can definitely make sure that we're getting memes back. And then inside Picture Factory, we need to do something where we remove all the old pictures every time we do this new picture routine. So go picturefactory.delete old pictures. And then let's go to Picture Factory and just make that function uh, so that we don't get any errors as of right now. Now, the next thing we need to do is save the camera's forward vector so that whenever we do this query, we press the button, we do this query, we save the camera's forward vector so that we can use it later when we're loading all the pictures. Now go int row num equals one, and we're going to first uh, loop through uh, for int i equals one, i less than or equal to, let's go 60. That's going to be, say, our max number of pictures. And then increment this by 10. Because if you remember correctly, the Google API only allows us to get 10 results at a time. So we want to loop through 10 at a time and do however many searches we want uh, in order to get to our max number. So 10 searches at a time. We're going to arbitrarily choose 60 here, but you can do as many searches as you want. So inside this loop, let's go string URL equals, and then go back to uh, that Google Search Console and paste in that whole long string that we got from there. Where it says Q equals, we're going to append that with our query variable. variable. And then where it says uh, start, that's going to be our start result number. So in this loop, that's going to be uh, our variable i. And then where it says key equals, that's what we're going to put in our API key. So now we're going to actually make the request. So go uh, create a new WW object, uh, yield return until that's done. And in Picture Factory, we're going to need to make a function called create images. So inside that function, create images, that's going to take in a list of strings, which is all of the URLs in this uh, current result. We're going to take in the result number, and we're going to take in the camera's forward vector. So let's put all that in, and we're going to pass in a parse response, which is going to take the result of that uh, www request, and it's going to parse that to extract a list of URLs. So for right now, we'll get back to this later, but just create a function that returns a list of strings, call it parse response, and it's going to take in uh, a string text. So then after that, we're going to increment row num, and then we'll just, for example, wait five seconds, and then we'll set our button's parent game object to active again. So inside parse response, we're going to first create a list of URLs, call it URL list, and then create a uh, string array URLs, which is the text response split by the new line character. So every index in that array is going to be a new line. Now, if we loop through every line of that uh, URL's string array, we can check if the current line contains the, word, contains the word link. And then we can set the string URL to the substring uh, of our choosing, which starts at 12 and ends at the length minus 13. Uh, now, further, before we add this URL to the list, we're going to check if the URL contains uh, .jpg or .png because there is a way to filter that in the Google API and the custom search API, but for me, that portion of it wasn't working. So we're just going to double check here and only add it to the list if it ends in uh, JPEG or PNG. So then outside of all this, we're going to finally return that URL list. All right, so the last thing we need to do is complete our picture factory script. So if we go into there, uh, let's first create a public game object pick prefab, and that's because we need to drag a reference in for our picture prefab so we can instantiate it from the script.
And let's also create a uh, public reference to the Google service. So we can drag that into the inspector as well. Now, let's go inside delete old pictures. Let's make sure the child count of this uh, ground, plane ground plane stage transform is greater than zero. If it is, we can loop through all the children and destroy all those game objects. That'll remove all the pictures that are there currently. Now, inside our create images script, uh, this is what takes in the URL list and the result number and the camera's forward vector. This is where we're going to instantiate our picture prefab. So go in pick num equals one and create a vector three center, which is the camera's um, main transform. So for each string URL in the URL, URL list that we're getting passed, we want to first uh, get the position that we're going to set that picture to. So let's go vector three position equals get position. Uh, that's going to take pick num, result num, and cam forward. So we're going to create this function later, but for now, just create below here a function that returns a vector three called get position that takes in an int, an int, and a vector three. So below this get position, let's go game object pic equals instantiate pick prefab uh, at that position. Quaternion dot identity is the rotation, and we're going to set it to uh, as a child of this dot transform. And then we'll go picture.getComponent, picture behavior, and then we're going to load the image from this URL. And then let's just increment the pick num here. Now, inside get position, this is where we're going to kind of create that sea of images that you see. Uh, you could do this any way you want. You could make the pictures go in a circle around you or whatever. But for me, uh, I thought the best thing was to load everything in front of the camera and just do it kind of by row. And we're going to go, first of all, if pick num is less than or equal to 5, because if you remember, in each row, we have 10 results. So if it's less than or equal to 5, we're going to set position to the cam, for, cam forward vector plus a new vector 3, which is pick num times negative 3 for the x, so that handles the x position. As pick num get, gets incremented, we multiply pick num by negative three to get its position. Set the y to zero, because that's, that's already set. And then for row number, multiply by 3.5. I found that to be a pretty good distance for each row. And then or else, we want to set position to the cam forward vector plus a new vector three, but here we're gonna do pick num modulus five, uh, because we're doing the right basically the right side of us multiply that by a positive three and then do the same for row number and then after that is done we can finally return the position and that's the position of each picture that we're going to place okay so we're done with all our scripting so let's create an empty game object called google service and put the google service script on it so drag the picture factory script onto the ground plane stage because all of our pictures are going to be created as children of this game object Drag in all the appropriate, appropriate references in the inspector, and then do the same thing for the Google service. The last thing we should need to do is make sure our get pictures function is getting called. So let's go to the on click event of our button, and let's call it from there, dragging in the Google service script and finding our get picture function. Now, when we click play and test this out, let's make sure we enable the ground plane stage in the editor and enable the button that we set to off as default. Now, if we say a word and click the button to perform the search on that text, you'll see that all of the memes that we want are right there. All right, so that's it. That's all I got. Let me know in the comments uh, what you guys want to see in the next video. Maybe we do something on the Vision API, or maybe we go in a totally another direction. I have no idea. Let me know in the comments what you guys want to see. Goodbye. Follow me at Matthew Hallberg.